Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. A few days ago Gebekli Tepe made the headlines as two professors presented a new study which showed the archaeological continuity of certain types of stone tools, from Ice Age cultures in Siberia to the 12,000 year old site of Gebekli Tepe implying that the origins of the famous pre-pottery Neolithic site could well have been influenced by people migrating thousands of miles from the east. The hypothesis was presented in Istanbul earlier this month. The migration of the ancient people in question started in Siberia 30,000 years ago, a people who moved all over Asia, including westward along the Inner Asian Mountain Corridor. They reached the Zagros mountain region, and from there they mixed with the hunter-gatherers of southeastern Anatolia. The professors behind the study traced their roots by analysing the types of microblade stone tool technologies. One of the authors of the study, Samir Ganeri, a retired professor from the Caucasia and Central Asia Archaeology Research Centre of the Kuz Eylel University said, the relationship of the Gebekli Tepe high culture with the carriers of Siberian microblade stone tool technologies is no longer a secret. Yes, a specific type of microblade, a technology that was developed 30,000 years ago in Siberia, was being made in the Zagros Mountains in the early Holocene, a technology that was then transferred to the culture behind Gebekli Tepe. He continued, the results of the genetic analyses of Iraq's Zagros region confirm the traces of the Siberian North Asian indigenous people, who arrived at Zagros via the Central Asian mountainous corridor, and met with the Gebekli Tepe culture via northern Iraq. So firstly, archaeological finds do show the Siberian people travelled to the Zagros region, and secondly, there was a relationship between the Siberian hunter-gatherers and native Zagros hunter-gatherers as seen by genetic studies. In a video that I made around four months ago, called The Younger Dryas and the Origins of Gebekli Tepe, I explained how, according to a genetic study a few years ago, it was discovered that Anatolian farmers shared 90% of their genetics with local Anatolian hunter-gatherers but that the other 10% came from a gene pool related to the Iran or Caucasus region. The Zagros Mountains stretch from northern Iraq all the way through Iran, and so this matches what the professors have discovered in their study of microblades. These tiny blades, 2 to 5 mm long, have been analysed. Fine precision tools that were set into bone, a technology that was carried with the migrants from the east. So, in summary, it looks like Siberian migrants travelled to the Zagros region, mixed with the local Zagros hunter-gatherers, a population that then migrated to southeastern Anatolia, and mixed with the local indigenous hunter-gatherers, all the time taking their microblade technologies with them. It's therefore not impossible that other aspects of their culture were transferred as well. Some media outlets will no doubt say something like, Ancient Siberians built Gebekli Tepe. But to be clear, that isn't what is being said. We do know that a small percentage of the genetics of Anatolian farmers did come from the east. It's just that the new study may well have identified who these people actually were, and that they were present at the enigmatic site of Gebekli Tepe. Maybe these hunter-gatherers from the Zagros, who have origins in Siberia, were more advanced in various technologies and techniques, compared to the indigenous hunter-gatherers in Anatolia. And maybe they did transfer this more advanced knowledge, as well as other elements of their culture as they entered Anatolia. But we have to understand, it's not like we find comparable T-shaped pillars predating Gebekli Tepe in the Zagros Mountains or further east in Siberia. These megalithic blocks do seem to have their origins in southeastern Anatolia from around 11,500 to 12,000 years ago, and they could well be the brainchild of more than one culture coming together. 
may be the mixing of diverse populations, the mixing of ideas and technologies, allowed for the concept of decorated T-shaped pillars to emerge, as well as a new settled way of living. We obviously don't know. It's possible that this mixed population first created the older sites like Kortik Tepe, Gusir Hoyuk and Monkuklu Tala, generations before Gebekli Tepe. But with the ancient Siberian form of microblade found and used at Gebekli Tepe, it does imply that some aspects of the pre-pottery Neolithic culture entered southeastern Anatolia from the outside. And so, I think it is a worthwhile study to analyse the finds of the hunter-gatherer cultures in the Zagros Mountains, as well as older cultures further in the east, to see if there is a continuation of culture aside from microblades. Straight away my mind went to the Ice Age Multiburet culture of ancient Siberia, with their snake depictions being very similar in form to what we see carved onto the T-shaped pillars of Gebekli Tepe. They made striking human figurines and beaded jewellery, they engraved pictures of animals, and also carved fine animal figurines. Instead of stone pillars, they had circular houses made of large animal bones, but these houses were bolstered with stones. I know it's quite unscientific at this stage, but maybe there are some basic comparisons we can make between the Multiburet and Gebekli Tepe. For me this new study really is quite exciting, and it opens up many possibilities regarding the origins of the pre-pottery Neolithic culture of southeastern Anatolia. Before I end this video, I'd like to point you to a fantastic new channel on YouTube which many of you may have seen called History for Granite. So far he's made 13 incredible videos, they contain some brilliant innovative ideas, each backed up with keen observations, data and facts, and I've learned something new with every video I've watched. I've left links to the channel in the description below, and I would urge you to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.